Coming up, I'm at one of my favorite syndicate shoots in Wicklow for some wild wing shooting. We take a closer look at the Benelli 828U and I take one off my cousin's bucket list as we stock his first Scottish tag. Welcome to Field Sports Ireland. This is the first drive on the Shelton Abbey shoot. This is a shoot that I've been coming to since I'm 11 years of age. Started beating here and shot my first ever driven game here on a keeper's day. And I actually worked here when I left college for three years as a keeper. So I have a great personal connection to this shoot. And been invited today to film and shoot. So a real treat for me. And it's only their second day of the season and it's the first time pushing this drive through. And just with the year that's been, there's still a lot of leaf on the trees. So I wouldn't expect the birds to fly massively well here. We're gonna be nice and selective, just a nice way to, to get the day started. My first time using this Benelli 828 as well. So I don't want any screamers yet till I dial in with this. Shot a, shot a few clays with it yesterday and it shoots really nice. So hopefully, hopefully we'll get a, a few here. Just for this first drive, I'm using black gold 32 gram six fibers and later on here we'll be on some proper high stuff. I'll be going up a couple of weights in cartridge. Basically on this drive there's a cover crop behind this wood and it's quite small, a couple of acres, but there's a native Irish plantation behind that and some fields and they'll be blanking in all the fields and the native Irish plantation into this cover crop. So the birds might have to fly three or four times before they even make it over us. So this early in the season, before the birds are fit and strong, um, they can be pretty tired by the time they get to us. So, but later on in the year, when the birds get fitter and stronger, they'll be sailing over these trees and they make really testing shots because you've only got very small windows to shoot them in and it can be, can be quite tricky. That was a good little drive to start. We were really out of it up here on the top of the line. Um, the guys down below us got some, got some good birds. They got up above the tops of the trees and flew down the hill nicely. Uh, I shot three birds there. I was trying to be, was trying to be pretty selective, but um, just didn't really want to sort of shoot into this foliage. But yeah, onwards and upwards, next drive. So yeah, the gear we wear when we're driven shooting, I mean, it's, it's very much just traditional dress, um, shooting clothing and golfing clothing. It was traditionally plus fours, and they have a very sort of practical nature. If you're in shoes and trousers, tweed trousers, and you're out in the mud like we are, your trousers get filthy and they're difficult to clean. So they wore short trousers, long socks, and socks were much easier to clean, and it's just, become a tradition and for me I just enjoy that whole getting dressed up wearing the gear but the gear I'm wearing today is all from Jack Pike and most people will know there's some really really expensive brands of shooting clothing which are great but for me I do this two three times a year I don't need to go and spend a thousand or fifteen hundred quid on tweed breeks and a, a shooting jacket and it's why I love the Jack Pike stuff I'm I'm literally dressed for 200 quid. I mean, David Wright spends more a month on makeup for doing the news than, um, than I spent on my gear for today. And yeah, you look smart.
massive team effort here. Just there have been people here since before first light this morning. We've probably 20, 25 beaters out in front of us, 15 or 20 pickers up behind us, just to make sure everything runs smoothly. Here it's a single-handed keeper, although his wife would kill me for saying that. He, he gets a hell of a lot of help from his wife and his kids, but with beaters. A lot of the beaters and the pickers up, it'll be about the dog work, and it's a great way to get out and train a young dog and work a dog. For me, nothing more satisfying than working your own dog. I don't think I've ever put lead on a bird like that one with the second barrel. For me, it's an adrenaline rush. It's, it's not a competitive sport, but it's an adrenaline rush. I cannot believe the kills I'm getting with these cartridges. Beautiful Irish weather has come in fairly heavy to try and spoil the fun, but still it's good shooting weather. You get the get the wet gear on and, and carry on. Got my ass kicked a bit there by them. Um, they didn't fly fantastically well in this heavy rain, but they were tricky. There was a lot of birds just coming out with a, with a nice curve on them. I was struggling, I was sort of trying to get through them as high crossers here, and they were they're just swinging towards me all the time, so you had to really pull the gun in front of them and up above them, it felt like. And yeah, I was, I was pushing through a lot of birds there and missing them underneath, but Shot some, shot some really nice ones, really happy. Shot a screaming crosser trying to sneak back across the wood late on there. Must have been 60, 65 yards away, so. But pegs are pretty tight together here. So I was able to watch my neighboring gun, see when he was unloaded, and then take birds that were going across his peg, which is perfectly fine to do in my opinion. But yeah, it's just been a, been a wonderful day. It's been everything I hoped it would be, but I can't thank the Shelton Syndicate and Harry Nash enough for have me along for today, it's been absolutely brilliant. Well, a massive thanks to Harry Nash and the team at Shelton Abbey for having me back. And now here's a few tips on how to adjust your gun. 
Now I actually wanted to chat a little bit more about this Benelli A2HU I've been using. Used it the other day in Shelton Abbey and got on really well with it actually. And when this gun was released, probably about three years ago, I shot it and I wasn't that impressed by it. Um, I'm not a big fan of light guns, but since I've had this one, I've spent a bit of time, I've got it to fit me and I'm actually really, really pleased with it. It's a really nice gun to shoot. It's quite, if you're not used to this kind of thing, if you haven't had the Benelli semi-autos, it can be quite daunting to adjust the fit. But all you need to do is unscrew this recoil pad, then unscrew the Progressive Comfort recoil system. And then with a 13 mil socket, you just take off the stock, remove the shims here, and then this comes with a full set of shims, spacers, and plates to adjust your drop and cast. If you jump onto the Benelli website and download the manual for this gun, it gives you all the combinations of all the drops and casts. You can go left hand or right hand. And by playing about with this a little bit, I've managed to get the fit pretty good for me. Now what I will get is the aftermarket extension recoil pad. Um, when I was shooting it last week, I just stuck a slip-on recoil pad on it just to extend it slightly, but you can get a, a longer one for this, and you can get a higher pad here. This pad here is actually really useful. I didn't think you'd notice much benefit from it, but felt recoil on the face is insignificant with this gun, even using 36 gram shells. Beautiful gun to use and incredibly versatile, and I definitely think that this has a, has a place in people's cabinets. Gun fit is a often neglected necessity in my opinion and when you can buy an over and under off the shelf and basically adjust it to fit you as near as you're going to get to being perfect this is going to this is going to fit most people with the variety of adjustments you can make I really really think it's a unique gun and I can't wait to get my hands on the sporter that's out which has a steel action comes in 32 inch barrels and should be a really really good clay busting gun one other thing worth mentioning with this it has 18.4 mil bores and i think that's essential when you're shooting with fiber wads i'm firmly convinced that backboard guns don't pattern as well with fiber wad cartridges so having this 18.4 board gun works really well with fiber wads and we should all be shooting fiber wads now if i'm honest and i think that Guns like this going back to the nominal bore is definitely an improvement. Well, I hope that was useful. And now we head over to a windy Scotland for some stags. If you are a stalker, then by nature you may well have a bucket list of places to go and hunts to realise. And for my cousin Larry, stalking a red stag in the Highlands was top of his list. So we have travelled from Ireland up to the Dalness estate here in Argyll, Scotland to do just that. We have mountains in Ireland, but they are nothing to the Glens and Munros here. Stag hunting may not cost as much as you think either, and we are doing it on a bit of a budget. Here at Dalness we are using their self-catering cottage, which is not only cosy and well fitted, but it's right on the track where you start your stalk. The weather today is very changeable, with lots of gusty winds and plenty of those hearty highland showers. We came over yesterday on the ferry. 
Now just as a quick tip for travelling from Ireland to Scotland with your own guns and ammo, make sure that you apply for your European visitors permit from your local Garda station. When you have that, you send it with your licence to the estate where you are going to stay and they apply for your visitors permit for the UK. Flying with guns is a little tricky as some airlines like Ryanair won't accept guns, so you may find it easier to come over on the ferry as we did. It's also worth remembering that Irish ferries will let you bring guns but won't let you bring ammunition of any kind. However, Stenoline allow you to bring your own guns and ammo, so that's who we cross with. And that means that Larry is using my Sacco with a GPO scope for the first time on this trip. finally reached the area that Colin, our guide, thinks will be the perfect spot for Larry to take his first stag. This, this is notorious, this bit. You come up here, you think there's nothing, you spy it, you see nothing. The minute we start walking, things start popping yeah, out. Up, yeah. Yeah. So we're, just, we're going to just work our way nice and slowly along this edge here. There's loads of wee ledges. Good chance of the behinds and snags tucked in along here. So we'll just work our way along and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Just above us, on the steep mountainside, is Larry's chance. Now the adrenaline is pumping and the walk up to the animal seems much less hard work, but getting it down might be. Lucky for us, Colin has the perfect tool for the job. And we see Storm coming up the mountain behind us with the pony. This pony extraction is also a first for me and a wonderful thing to witness. Staying here for a few days and stalking this magnificent stag with my cousin has been a great experience and I think he's really enjoyed it too. Larry? Are you happy? Yeah, really happy. You just can't shut him up sometimes. If you would like to know more about the Dalness Estate, then go to dalnessestate.co.uk. Larry's still smiling about that one today. Well, thanks for spending time with us this month. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Please hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell so then you'll be notified whenever we put out more content. And you can drop over to the fieldsportschannel.tv website as well if you want to see some stuff there. And with that, I'll see you next month. <laughs>